Autism rates in the U.S. have risen by 30 percent, according to a CDC report released yesterday. One in 68 children have an autism spectrum disorder compared to one in 88 just two years ago. And new research from the Allen Brain Institute in Seattle and the UC San Diego Autism Center of Excellence may point to the origin of autism during a baby's development in the womb. UC San Diego researcher Eric Corshane joins me with the details and welcome to Evening Edition. Mm, it's good to be here with you, Peggy. Thank you. Well, Eric, you analyzed 25 different genes in the brain tissue of children with and without autism disorder uh, postmortem. Walk us through this animation of how you found these genes. So we chose different brain regions. Uh, the one brain region that might be shown on the screen right now is the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is really crucial for social language and communication functions. It's known to be overgrown with too many brain cells. So we positioned the collection of samples in this region and we took a number of different sections through this region and across these different sections that were taken from this region, each and every child, we examined different genes. Each gene that we examined is a gene that selectively marks a particular layer of that part of the brain. There's six layers in that part of the brain and each layer does something unique. The arrows right now are pointing to layers that were missing representation of some of those genes. That means those layers weren't developing correctly. This points at a representation of all the layers that we're seeing. You can see that the representation of the genes is displayed in different colors and one layer or one area of the cortex is missing those uh, genes. And we saw that with the orange missing on that. That's right. Why do you think this uh, is linked to brain development in the fetus, particularly toward autism? Dis so we, uh, we deliberately designed this experiment to test the possibility that autism might begin in early development. The, the way that we did this is by selecting genes that mark different layers specifically because it's known that the development of each of these layers takes place, the formation of each, each of these layers takes place in the second and third trimesters. So we reasoned that if some of the brain cells were missing expressing these genes, they were not fully progressing through the entire formation of layers. That takes place in the second and third trimesters. And in fact, that's what we found in patches, so, that there were missing, uh, missing expression in layers. And you were able to isolate that early on uh, uh, because of those uh, samples that you took. Right. Now, just to be clear, is this evidence or an indication that autism disorders are genetically based? Well, uh, it is not by itself evidence that it's purely genetic. It could also be, there's a possibility it could be non-genetic and it could be something that mom is exposed to during, during pregnancy. It could be viruses or toxins or stress. But what we do know from another research study that we did is that gene networks that regulate the number of cells that are produced during uh, the second trimester, the types of cells and the layers is disrupted in this very in these very blocks of tissue. So, so in I, the same blocks of tissue, we know gene networks are disrupted that normally are involved in this. So there could actually be triggers that uh, disrupt those genes. It's not necessarily a, 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 a something that is passed from parent to child. It could be something in utero. We don't know that yet. Well, that's that's uh, that's correct. But there's suspicion that there could be cases that are that come to this point because there are mutations of genes. In other cases, there could be environmental. Uh, there's so much speculation that's been going around about the causes of autism. Why is it important to know when it begins? Well, of course, this is hugely important for parents and hugely important for physicians. When does this disorder get underway? It's a lifelong disorder. Knowing when it gets underway will help identify the triggers, the triggering moments, and potentially identify possible ways of preventing it from starting in the very first place. Identification that it is uh, beginning, the neural abnormalities are beginning in the womb, is a very big clue as to what the triggers might be. Um, how could your research be used for early diagnosis and of course uh, mm -hmm. ultimately in, in finding a treatment? Ah, well this study plus uh, the companion study points to a system of gene activity that might be disarranged. And so we've looked for that uh, in uh, living autistic one and two year olds and we're currently exploring the possibility that these systems can be detected even at the age of one or two and if so, then those could become early biomarkers for uh, risk for autism. And ultimately, the earlier you catch it, you might be able to treat it uh, exactly, earlier. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Earlier identification, earlier treatment, better outcome. Okay, well, we have a lot more on our website, kpbs.org. UC San Diego researcher Eric Corshane, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.